What's poppin' y'all? It's the Star in Charge Star Life V, and welcome to another edition of Certified Star, where we figure out what makes these niggas stars for real. So today, I got a very special guest. He can go by Stunner Man 02, or what was the other name you was saying? Jordan Gomes, or even, hold on, give me one second. Hold on, hold on. Nah, I do stand it. See, as you can see, I'm with E of Star Quality, and nigga, you should've said action, cause you caught me off guard. <laughs> Man, I'm getting tired of that bitch talk. Bad bitch, no ambition, make my dick so. Call Silk, you need them D's or them zip songs. Nice dude, you don't wanna see me pissed off. I'm aggravated, upset. I'm at the point where everybody getting gut shake. Everybody hollering, you up next. But that don't mean shit, cause I ain't up yet. We on point always, come on, man. Right, right, right. So, uh, Stunner Man 02. That's me. So, uh, for those who don't know, who is Thunder Man 02? And I don't want no basic ass shit. I want you to take me back to the trap. Take right. me back to where you from, where you, what's your name, all the shit. Okay, so Thunder Man 02 is the persona I developed in order to deal with the environment that I consisted in or where I was put in, you know what I mean? I was dropped in. Okay. I'm from San Francisco, California. I'm not with the shit, so don't come talk to me like I am. But I grew up on Hayden Webster, that's Page Street. Okay. I moved to the point, lived on Garlington, Hunters Point, you feel me? And I feel like living in those two places really bred who I was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Being that person that didn't want to be involved in what my environment had to present and wanted to take the good out of it rather than the bad. And in doing that, you had to create something, mm -hmm. defense mechanism, coping mechanisms, all in this type of person who mm -hmm. eventually became Stunner Man 02, you feel me? Okay. So, you know, that's me right there, simply put. But, you know, my name is Jordan Gomes, and I feel me, I feel like I'm an intelligent individual. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm somebody who's always learning, mm -hmm. but I feel like I, I, I'm, I know a good amount, but I don't know everything. You okay. know what I'm saying? So, I feel like that's a real base in my center. Damn. Damn. I mean, this nigga had to lay it on the table Come like on, that bro. for real. I don't I don't like, <laughs> you said nothing basic, right? Yeah, yeah. I, look, that nigga wasn't coming to play. So, so let's talk about growing up. How was yeah. it? How was it? How was life growing up? Because you said you had to uh, you had to create this yeah. persona because you was um trying to deal with growing up, exactly. right? And the and the trials and tribulations you was facing with. But just kind of give us a little rundown so, of how was it growing up. My coming to age came from the '90s through like I w I became a teenager at the end of the hyphy movement or like the end of that, you know what I mean, the phase mm -hmm. out of it. So in the midst of that, the reality of it is growing up in it was um, living on two sides of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I see you got, uh, you had Buddy Bands come on uh, and come do an interview. Shout out to Buddy Bands. Hold on, who is this calling me? Hey, I can answer this during the interview? For sure. Hey Brody, I'm doing an interview. I'm gonna call you right back. Respect. It's my guy, it's my guy Depp. If you don't know who Depp is, it's like one of really my guys, feel me? I'm always with Depp. Man, what's up? Real King right here. Hey, go follow him, man. If you if you need to talk to him, if you need to talk to me and I can't re I'm not being re reached, call Deck. He could, he will find me, you know what I'm saying? All right, God, I love you, man. All right, for sure. Famous, nigga, famous over here got phone calls. Nah, phone hell no, nah, hell no. Nah. Hey, I, I didn't mean no disrespect. No, you good, phone, you good. Me? I just wanted to continue to be myself. You know right, know? right. But uh, basically, yeah, shout out Buddy Bands for coming on. One of the best up and coming rappers out now. Me and him actually grew up in uh, two neighborhoods that are kind of like parallel, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He grew up in Hayes Valley and I grew up on Pay Street. Okay. So Hayes Valley DVP is a, like um, equivalent to, on probably the most uh, identical neighborhood to Pay Street. Okay. So you feel me, I feel like his upbringing and was similar to mine, he's just a little younger than me. Mm -hmm. But growing up, you feel me, I grew up on two sides of the spectrum. Living in the hood and living what is the low socioeconomic uh, area of mm -hmm. San Francisco while also going to school and being in what is considered the upper echelon, so private mm -hmm. school, white folks, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, it was it was trying to, it's like a balancing act, code right. switching, you feel me? Trying to really find myself and be in my equilibrium, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was up though, you know what I mean? It was a point where people from my school wouldn't drop, they had to drop me off a block away from my house when they gave me a ride home because mm -hmm. it was times where it's like, oh, this is one of the hottest blocks right now. You could really get killed over here. Right. So, you know, it was interesting for real. Was it like uh, kind of hard? trying to balance the two because it's like it yeah. sounds like damn near that's two different lifestyles your home life versus mm -hmm. your school life so of course did you ever feel like did you ever like almost bring your like your home life to the school like you feel me like you I know mean, how, how you how niggas was acting out there did you ever just from being in that environment seeing it yeah, over and yeah. over again did you ever or even catch yourself 
acting like acting out or you hey, that was an excellent question you know i always try to keep my composure no matter who's in, in, in front of me or trying to throw me off but that was mm -hmm. a great question but um yeah the first day i went to a uh, private school cathedral school for boys we were in a tie and everything and we playing basketball so mm -hmm. i'm in sixth grade i'm talking to them how i would talk to the people that lived around me in my right. vernacular mm -hmm. using my colloquialism mm -hmm. I, they shooting i'm like oh you weak brick i'm talking shit. You know right what I mean? as you and do then, in basketball you do it and then <laughs> them it's like whoa like Hey, like, why are he, why is this guy being mean to me? You know, like, what is like? Wait, and I'm like, damn, like, and I first day out of school, like, I, I went home and I was damn near crying. Like, I didn't want to go to football practice because I'm like, damn, nobody fuck with me. I'm the only black kid, mm -hmm. and I'm like, damn, how am I going? I only had my guy Patrick Fung. Shout out Patrick Fung. We mm -hmm. went together with it, man. He about to he about to get his doctorate in uh, physical therapy. So you need to get your body right. Tap in with Patrick Fung. He's gonna get you right. But um. Just that experience was, you feel me, it, it, it was hard, but it took me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And it let me know, like, oh, the people that I live around aren't the only people in the world. Right. So it taught me how to, like, interact with people in a different way. It taught mm -hmm. me how to, quote, unquote, play that game. Okay. So, you know, but yeah, it was, that was, it was definitely hard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was, but I loved it because taking me out of my comfort zone pushed me to want to be in a new place. Me being, making friends mm -hmm. with them and saying, okay, you know, my way is not always the way. Right. Allowed me to go to people's houses and be there and like, okay, my, bring my homies with me. And they like, bruh, let's hit this house. Cause we used to do a thing called go to backpack parties. Mm -hmm. You bring your backpack to the party empty and you leave with it full, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just like, right. I'm like, when we there at these people's houses, I'm like, nah, bruh, don't take nothing because they, they have all of this out. Because if you take something, they know you won't be able to come back. Mm -hmm. The things that you gain from coming back, the knowledge, the relationships, mm -hmm. and and really, literally, the money right. is, will will um be more than you can imagine mm -hmm. if you keep this relationship. And they, my homies did that, and they was like, okay. Then they went to a bigger house, and it was a bigger backpack party. So I was like, Damn. nah, I'm just messing around. But but I love all the people that I ended up meeting while I was uh, transitioning and becoming the person who I am. You know, mm -hmm. that was a long winded answer, but I had to tell you the full. For and sure, for sure. So you were saying you was going to like a predominantly white school. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm guessing white teachers, white kids. Do you Everything. feel like? You ever had dealt with any type of racism yeah, or somebody discrimination? Called me, somebody literally called me a nigger in class, and this was a time where I was introverted. So how old? How old was you? Like, give us like years. Like I was the time frame. I was 11 years old. Okay. Literally called me a nigger in class. I'm chilling in there. We have a substitute teacher. There's this dude named Alex Hillen, blonde hair, blue eye, white white dude, and people that Hitler was talking about. He was in love with type shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like we was chilling in class, and like I had, I was myself. I'm a goofy individual, right. and I had an inclination that this person didn't like me, but because I was one of the few people in my neighborhood and just around me having an ed uh, education mm -hmm. uh, put his, oh yeah i uh, had an education um getting an opportunity to do something different mm -hmm. i felt like i was uh, had to be on some jackie robinson shit take a <laughs> lot you know what i mean take a lot so it because it's like i knew if i fucked this up nobody would be like oh he did it so that can be a route for me mm -hmm. you know what i mean so um so it was just in, chilling in the class and then He's like, out of nowhere, he's like, yeah, you're, he kind of, he was hesitant of, he's like, you're a nigger. And I was like. Like okay. trying to be funny. No, it was like, it was condescending, but he was like, he was saying it in a way to where it was unfamiliar, but it was like, you, it was like a way. Like, do you think, what was his end goal? Like, you think he was trying to embarrass you in front of people? He, he said it so low to where only me and him could hear it. Mm. So it was more so a thing to where I think it was something that was being um, taught to him in a certain way. Mm. Or he something that he was getting familiar with. And then because he might have been unfamiliar with me, he might have mm -hmm. been socially awkward, then that might have been it. But fuck all that analyzing shit, that's some racist ass shit. I'm not finna uh, break it down and justify why this motherfucker might be trying to call me a nigger. Mm -hmm. The nigga would call me a nigger, simply as that. Mm -hmm. So when I, but what really had me like, uh, threw me off is when, when I went to go tell the teacher, mm -hmm. the teacher kind of like shut me down and it was a white t a white male and I'm like, hey, he just called me. No, I don't give a, I don't care what you're talking about. If you say anything, you're go you're uh, gonna get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's like a substitute teacher. So I'm like, damn, fuck the, you might be getting stressed and all this shit and you taking that out on me because I'm the only black kid in class. Right. But it's like, as a kid who's introverted and mm -hmm. you're like, damn, it's hard for you to speak up. And you feel like if you speak up to the authority, mm -hmm. you're going you gonna to lose this opportunity that not a lot of people get. It was hard. And I was like, that just got me to a point where it's like, man, I'm, I don't want anybody like white saying that shit to me. And then it got to the point where kids was bullying me. And I went from being in that pocket of kind of like 
being a nice kid to like fuck that. I'm fighting anybody who is mm-hmm. in there who is, who is doing anything wrong to me because I feel abused. You know what I mean? But for, yeah, so it was it was a, it was a tough experience. I mean. So do you feel like you had to go like through a lot of that shit going to that school? Hell yeah, like it was like. And like, how did that shit make you feel growing up? Because you feeling like you you in a completely different space that you yeah. was right now for mm-hmm. you when he was a kid. You know, we kids, yeah. impressionable. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You could take things more serious. So like, how was you feeling like during that time? And how did you end up like kind of getting past that? Don't get me wrong. It was a lot of good experiences through that time. Mm-hmm. But that was the ju- or the inspiration and the reason for me to be like, okay, I want to be like this way to my with my people. Or mm-hmm. I want to be like this way with black people. Or, you know, I might have these opportunities with certain white people, but I'm like, man, I don't know because I don't want to be in something that's going to compromise who I am as well as I might have to get, I might have to put up with something that is literally uh, destroying my culture and who I am inside. They said, when I was going to high school, they said one of these, one of the things that black people have to uh, sacrifice mm-hmm. when they uh, assimilate to a corporate job with majority white people is that you lose your swag. Right. You know what I mean? You go from having this culture, this right. balance, and this And then you're like all and then you, perfect and, I, and tightened up and I've, shit. I've literally seen people doing it, do it in college, mm-hmm. going to college, and they're an intelligent person as who they are mm-hmm. with their vernacular, their colloquialisms, mm-hmm. who they are, and then they go to college and they, I wouldn't even say square up, because you could be a square and still have slang, you can still speak mm-hmm. the way you speak, you know what I mean? 